Hey, what's up folks, how's it going? This is Watch. So a couple of weeks ago, we actually created the most powerful PC we've ever made in this channel, and that was the AMD Dual R9 390X rigs with the OctaCore FX 9590 chip from AMD. And what I wanna do is kind of elaborate uh, the performance of this computer because it is pretty darn remarkable, the uh, amount of FPS uh, scores that you can get, and especially how fluid and dynamic and tear-free the 4K experiences, not to mention how fluid quad HD gaming is, especially if you're going to game on an ultra widescreen display that has a native resolution of 3440 by 1440. So basically we're going to uh, go through a more detailed breakdown of the actual gaming performance of this uh, gaming PC so you have a better understanding of what this thing is capable of. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now straight out of the box, when I initially built the computer, the performance that I got with our two R9 390Xs was pretty darn incredible. It yielded some incredible average FPS scores, especially at uh, 3840 by 2160 resolution. But after a couple of weeks of just playing around and optimizing my hardware and software, I did manage to upgrade the initial performance that we benchmark in that build guide video. And currently I've overclocked the GPUs to 1180 megahertz on the core clock frequency and the memory clock has been significantly bumped to a uh, 6.6 gigahertz which is a huge difference compared to the stock 6 gigahertz frequency. Now couple that with our AMD FX 9590 clocked at over 5 gigahertz it's going to produce somewhere in the vicinity of 4 to 6 percent performance increase from our original build guide. Now of course for more detailed information about the entire gaming rig check out the description down below but now we're going to finally get into our gaming benchmark results. The first thing that we're going to take a look at is called of Duty Black Ops 3 at pretty much maxed out settings. You're looking at 81.6 average frames per second at the 4K resolution and 92.8 frames per second if you're uh, gaming at 3440 by 1440. In terms of minimum FPS scores, both resolutions are in around 60 frames per second. So extremely playable, extremely fluid and dynamic and completely tear free from my personal experience. Now moving on to The Witcher 3, which is probably one of the most challenging games to run at at 4K resolutions with ultra detail settings. You're looking at 44.2 frames per second on the 4K setting and 46.7 frames per second at uh, the uh, ultra wide uh, resolution. And in terms of minimum FPS scores, you're looking in around uh, 20 uh, frames per second. So uh, at this uh, specific setting, I wouldn't call this exactly a fluid gaming experience, but this game is just so challenging to run at, at specifically at these settings. You're gonna have to definitely spend a lot of money to have have this in the range of 60 frames per second but if you uh, tone down some of the detail settings and tweak uh, some of the parameters of the graphics you'll definitely get to the point where the game runs a lot more smoother but again you're definitely gonna have to sacrifice some of those uh, detail settings in order to get the most out of this specific hardware for this title. Now playing Fallout 4 is a completely different experience if you pretty much max out the game at full 4k resolution you're getting a incredible 70.2 average frames per second and a 91.6 average frames per second at the ultra wide uh, screen resolution and your minimum uh, frames per second is still pretty good 44 at 4k and uh, 51.5 at ultra wide uh, resolution so playing fallout 4 on uh, this system is definitely a treat and something i look forward to all the time now next another challenging game especially at uh, high detail settings is going to be grand theft auto 5. now i set uh, the detail settings to about high and at 4k you're getting 54.8 average frames per second and uh, at the quad HD uh, widescreen resolution you're getting a uh, 58.3 average frames per second and in terms of minimum frames per second both resolutions hover around the 30 FPS mark and one of the things about GTA 5 that really benefits uh, from a R9 a 390x configuration is that we have 16 gigabytes of a VRAM which is definitely going to utilize the uh, engine that we have on uh, GTA 5 which is fairly memory intensive and having a, a configuration like this will really take advantage of what the game is really capable of not to mention some of the uh, graphical mods that you can add to GTA 5 on the PC which definitely will improve your graphical experience of the game and it's nice to know that you have the graphical horsepower to really push this game to its maximum limit. Now next uh, Far Cry 4 at ultra settings at 4k resolutions we're getting 64.1 average frames per second and about 83.3 frames per second from the ultra wide setting and in terms of the uh, minimum FPS score you're looking at 47. 
1.2 uh, frames per second at 4K and 54.5 frames per second on the ultra wide resolution. And I've always wanted to play Far Cry 4 pretty much maxed out settings at these really high resolutions. But even with a GTX 980 Ti, it still didn't give me the performance that I was really looking for, especially if you want to avoid dropping any frames, being tear free and have a, just a general fluid experience that is completely seamless. And the last game that we're going to talk about is a little bit different. It's our good old fashioned grid auto sports at pretty much ultra settings. All the details are completely maxed out at the full 4K resolution. You're looking at 85.4 average frames per second with a minimum score of 66.4. And at the ultra wide resolution, you're looking at 108.1 average frames per second and 76.9 minimum frames per second. So generally racing games are more easier to run than your conventional shooter titles. So this is really no surprise, but it's pretty darn impressive playing a racing game like this at pretty much a maxed out a detail settings at these crazy resolutions. For anybody interested in making a high-end 4K racing simulator, a system like this can definitely deliver the performance that they're probably looking for. But really on that guys, that's really it. Thank you so much for watching and I definitely want to point you guys to that main build guide video. If you haven't seen it already, definitely check it out. It's again the most powerful PC we've ever made and as you can see from the performance results, it is pretty darn impressive the amount of FPS scores you can get and certainly if you're serious about actually gaming at a uh, quad HD resolution or ultra HD resolution you definitely want to think about multiple graphics cards sure it uh, definitely uh, draws a little bit more power but there is definitely a huge benefit when it comes to performance and if you want those FPS scores to be as high as possible to get the most fluid dynamic tear free gaming experience possible you should definitely consider adding a second graphics card to your gaming rig if you haven't done that already but thank you so much for watching again and if you have any specific questions let me know in the comment section down below we'll see you later take care